I love it. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to another episode of Tales from the Service Industry. Tonight, I'm actually here with Miss B. She's joining me again. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. How was your week? Oh, it was it was so much fun. If ever I run short on stories or things that have happened, which is very rare, I just need to work a weekend and then I have enough for like a year. <laughs> Ooh, please tell. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'd probably say my most recent one was this guy. It was over the weekend, obviously. And Saturday night, he had a room booked and he checked in and he went down and enjoyed our lovely bar and restaurant area and decided to get into it with uh, one of the restaurant managers. He was being cut off because he was a, had a little bit too much to drink. And for our restaurant to cut you off, you really have to be bad. So he was cut <laughs> off and uh, the restaurant manager had to come over and tell him like, look, you've had too much, why don't you go back to your room? And the guy then proceeded to like yell at him and then spit in the restaurant manager's face. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so the restaurant manager escorted him out and then security was obviously called and security comes and is trying to deal with him and get him to his room and out of the restaurant to which he then decided to punch the security guard in the face, give him a nice shiner. And then so the police was called and he was evicted and taken away by the police. So that was fun. And uh, the next morning, I'm the MOD in the morning and I get a call and they're like, um, somebody's calling us to speak with the manager. And that's really normal. I'm like, okay, send him through. So I talked to him and he's like, hi, I'm not sure if you know who I am. And he said his name and room number. And I was like, oh my God, this guy is calling. You know, those, you just think they're going to be so embarrassed the next day. They're not going to say anything, but no, he calls and he's like, I just want to make sure I'm not being charged for my room last night. Cause I didn't stay in my room. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, sir, um, the reason you didn't stay is because you were evicted from the property. And I didn't elaborate any further. You know, I didn't want to. Let's just leave it at that. And I was like, you're evicted from the property, which you still paid and reserved for that room. And due to your own behavior, you had to leave. But that's no fault of ours. So you are still being charged for that night. And then he proceeded to argue with me and said, but that is ridiculous. I did not stay in the room overnight. And I said, sir, the only reason you didn't stay in the room overnight was because you spit in a restaurant manager's face, then proceeded to assault another member of our staff and then was taken away by the police. Why do you think you would not be charged for that room? And his answer? And he's like, well, I didn't stay overnight. And I said, sir, you can <laughs> dispute it any which way you want. The charge is not going anywhere. <laughs> and he was like, oh. Well, I'll just dispute it with my credit card company. And I said, you go ahead and do that. And he hung up. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God. You, you could have told him that at least he wasn't being double charged because, you know, he had to pay for a place he didn't stay in. But he got to stay with the county for free. <laughs> yes, that's true. He had a comp night. <laughs> that's true. I should have said that. Oh, it's funny. And the funny thing is, like, security was, like, trying to charge, like, an eviction fee. I'm like, no, that's not a thing. But I'll, I'll, I'll keep the room intact for the night. How about that? They were just all pissed off because one of them got punched in the face. Well, sue them. Yeah. They, the guy was actually, he did press charges. Well, I mean, that's criminal, but you could go after him civilly. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Don't punch your staff. No, kudos to your uh, restaurant manager for not laying him out, though. I was so shocked. He just kept his cool and, like, Okay, because I got CC'd. Why I got CC'd, I don't know, but I was so excited. I got CC'd in all the incident reports, which included all the video footage. Ooh. I know. And I got to watch all of it. And it was just like I had popcorn. It was like, oh, my God. So I saw the whole spitting thing. And the restaurant manager just kind of like looked at him like in disbelief. You know, like, what just happened? <laughs> seeing this again oh, it was all great and everyone running around like crazy and i'm just like oh man yay saturdays well, as much as i would love to post something like that i know we can't i know <laughs> i would love to see it like <laughs> show you it yeah that'd be awesome oh it's funny i mean not funny it was horrible but well yeah but justice can be served pretty quickly right i'm just super glad he got arrested shoot yeah me too that would have been i mean to me the best part of it is the fact that he thought he could dispute off the room and tax from and the night argue prior you from like he kept arguing and i just was blown away you know at least he owned it <laughs> <laughs> yeah he never said he didn't do it he just was like well i shouldn't have been charged i'm like what <laughs> I, I can't follow your logic here, sir. That's why I said at least he owns it. 
Yeah, I'm the guy that punched that dude. <laughs> And you know what's funny though when I when I got to look at the video footage and they showed the pictures of him and everything it's exactly who you think it would be or wh- exactly what you think he would look like he did <laughs> I wasn't surprised in the least when I saw his photo I'm like oh of course that's a guy who spits in people's faces and punches them yeah that, that would be him you know what now I'm gonna try to pull up a photo so I can show you oh let me see see if you can make that out so for our listeners obviously oh okay oh man he just walked right up in front of that guy's face <laughs> who's who's the guy with the bag of trash that's like trying to separate so him? that was actually the public attendant that was trying to like calm things down so like everyone in the hotel was getting involved my front desk agent you just see her there that's the one that uh got made cry but she was just like had no idea what to do and she just kept working and like not looking up while all this is going down oh honey come on You've got a physical altercation, 911. Yeah, she's newer. I don't care. But yeah, so, you know, standard uh, overweight white male. I think he was wearing, wasn't he wearing like a Hawaiian shirt or something? Tattoos. He looked like he probably came from the 909 area. (laughs) Okay, sorry. Back on track. So (laughs) nightmare. (laughs) So nightmare guest. You have gypsies? Yeah, we have gypsies. So when I first... (laughs) What? Yeah, I know. It's crazy as it sounds. So when I first moved out here, I was told that every year, in certain times of the year, typically the fall, that gypsies would come through the area. And I'm thinking, okay, gypsies to me is crystal ball and wagons and Yeah, see, I'm thinking Hunchback of Notre Dame, like, that's... What? Yeah, I mean that's that's the mental image that I got too. Yeah. So that's not the case. They they traded in their their caravan wagon for a Dodge caravan kind of a thing, right? <laughs> so they're they're scammers. Oh. So traditionally, when they would come in, they will find quote unquote something in the room that should mm. warrant either a comp night, comp stay, or points, so that they can get comp stays. And they know all the point levels. They know everything for redemption. They're made, oh. They're uh, rewards members. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it doesn't matter what the brand is. They've got a rewards member That's number wild. for that brand. The most common complaint was, you know, a person comes to the front desk, they're irate, they've got a little Ziploc bag, and in that Ziploc bag is a condom. Why would you put it in a Ziploc? Because it's been opened. No, like, why would a guest, like, I'm, okay, I'm thinking of a guest. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so. (laughs) (laughs) I found this. I got to find a Ziploc. Sorry, threw down some breadcrumbs. I got lost. (laughs) Um, No, so what they would claim is that their kid was playing in the room. Typically, it was under the sofa or under the bed, and that they found this, quote unquote, used condom. So they would bring it to the front desk to complain. Oh. And they would always want a comp night and they would they would embellish it with, you know, oh, we have to have a room move. This room is dirty, blah, 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 blah. And then they would add on top of that. Yeah, I want a comp night. But, you know, this is this is unacceptable for, you know, inter big box hotel company name here. You know, they would say this is unacceptable for this brand. We want points as well. Oh, my God. So, you know, they get 250 bucks off their bill and they get, you know, 35,000 points, which gives them a free night. Oh my God. Right. Make it a career out of this. Exactly. They're, they would always walk kind of in the gray area of the law. So the used condom excuse was usually their main go-to. So how, wait, wait, wait. how many condoms are they bringing with them? How, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, go uh, on, go no on. No idea. What the heck? <laughs> I know. Um, one of my favorites though was uh, <laughs> we had a gypsy clan in the hotel. Oh, and no. yeah, that's the best word I could <laughs> use for them. I don't know what they call themselves, but yeah, Gypsy Clan. So a um, woman comes to the front desk and she is completely like upset. She's a little bit distraught and she happens to get my GM at the time. And she tells him that her daughter was playing with, uh, you know, on the, on the floor near the sofa, found a pill under the sofa and swallowed it. Now this little girl's like three, so I could see her putting it in her mouth if it really would have happened. But, you know, I can't get my kids to take liquid medication. How are they going to swallow a pill, right? So my boss looks at her without missing a beat, looks at me, says, call 911. And the woman starts to panic. (laughs) Yep. No, 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 no. Don't call the police, she says. He says, no, if your daughter swallowed a pill, we have to get her assistance. Yes. Looks back at me and he goes, call poison control also. And the woman (laughs) freaks out and runs away. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Bluff called. 
shortly after that, we had a band that came in that uh, they, they found the quote unquote, they found bed bugs in the room okay. during the investigation and like searching the room, trying to identify, you know, where else could these bugs be? What have you? Yeah, we found a jar that had bed bugs in it. Oh, my! they left the jar. Yeah, they left it out. Oh, my God. They traveled with bed bugs so that they could let one go in a room. Just to say, look, it's crawling right there on the bed. What? I'm not going to curse, but what a-holes. No, go ahead, curse. What assholes? Because yeah. not only are you, you know, pulling that whole scam, but then you could be infecting the room and then mm-hmm. causing an actual outbreak in a hotel. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, from the hotel standpoint, to treat a room for bed bugs. It's p- expensive it's expensive and it, i mean it takes out so many rooms i mean if yep. you do it if you do it right you're looking at a minimum of five rooms being out of service yeah for a side minimum to side of, up and down side to side up and down plus the center one that's affected yep and you're looking at three days for treatment oh my god so how do you distinguish someone from you know who could be a gypsy but then also someone who could have a legitimate complaint how do you tell well, God, it's going to sound so terrible. Okay. Uh, like with the gypsies, they travel in small groups. They don't okay. intermingle. And okay. the, the bands typically keep together. So you'll see the same people coming through again and again and again. But because they don't let in outsiders, the only way to genetically diversify their clans is to kind of swap clan members. So, oh. you know, you've got, you know, eight people, let's say, in a particular clan well, they need to marry off somebody or trade somebody, and that's exactly what they do. Ew. They'll swap with them amongst themselves. That's how actually I caught several of them because I would recognize certain people. Okay. I mean, I worked at that hotel for eight years, mm-hmm. so I got to know who people were. So you have you have the physical, like, I've seen you before. We've gone through this song and dance. You've scammed me last year. <laughs> and I actually, I actually said exactly that to a woman once oh my god (laughs) Um, because she had been at the hotel three times and on the third time this last time that she was there she came to me with one of the you know the pre-scripted scams i looked her square in the eye and i said look every year you come here every year you have this problem i'm like there will be no compensation oh and she just looked at me i'm like you can either check out or you can stay that's up to you but there will be no compensation i don't care what happens during your stay you get nothing oh my gosh that's amazing (laughs) that's that's the tone for your stay i mean because you know looking back in the histories our pms system it'll pull up every every stay that you had under that name and i can see every transaction that was done on your account so all the notes all all the the notes all the adjustments it's Mm -hmm. all tracked it never goes away and it's all the chains have this and mm-hmm. there it's called something different in every chain uh m- one of my most recent brands it was something called profile notes and it follows you so every time you book a reservation under your name your profile notes pop up with all your issues during your previous stay so we could see for normal guests you know we could see maybe you had trouble with your air conditioning your last day and so we can make sure that your air conditioning is working properly but we can also see if you're a scam artist and we're like oh we got to watch out for this guest and this Mm hmm. Oh, you know, what? OK, so speaking of uh, air conditioning problems, that was another one that they would pull. Really? They would pop the T stat. Um, sorry, they would pop the thermostat off the wall and then okay. snip a wire so that the connectivity would be lost. What? And then they would put the thermostat back on. And then, you know, they would say, oh, hey, look, you know, the air conditioner in my room doesn't work. It hasn't worked our entire stay. <laughs> you snipped a wire. You snipped a wire to make it not work. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's happened as well. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my th- this is kind of related to that, but not really. But I remember at the property we worked at, we had a guest that was really upset. They got charged for smoking in the room. And I had said, You're, s-, and they're like, Well, how do you know? I'm like, Well, one, it smells, but two, you completely covered and duct taped the fire alarm. And he's like, mm. No, I didn't. And I walked him up to the room and pointed at it. And I said, This is your room. This was. Oh, well, I'm a, I didn't do that. Nobody has been in this room. People doing stuff to the Yeah, I had, <laughs> I had exactly that today. Really? Yeah, we had a guest that she came to the front desk around 9 a.m., wanted to know what time checkout was, and was told it's 12 noon. Yeah. She says, okay. She walks away. 12.30 comes around. Front desk agent says to me, can you check this room? The guest hasn't checked out yet. I said, well, when was the last time you talked to her? She said, I talked to her about 9.30. Told okay. her checkout time was 12 noon. Right. I said, okay, well, let me go take a look. She says to me, oh, before you go, she checked out online. Okay. 
Okay. I said, well, what time did she check out online? She said 9.30. I'm like, she checked out at 9.30, but she's still in the room? She said, yeah. Okay, let me go take a look. So I go walk over there, and the, uh, the door was propped open. The guest wasn't in the room. I walked into the room, and two seconds later, one of the other, like, so there was two women in the room, but one of the women walked into the room behind me. And I said, I need your help in understanding what's going on. And she goes, well, what do you mean? I said, well, checkout time is noon. It's well past that. But you checked out at 930 online. You're still here. You're still occupying the room. She goes, oh, well, you know, I'm not the one that registered for the room. I said, okay, well, where's the registered guest? Oh, she's in the car. I said, great. Let's go talk to her. Oh, my God. So we walk out into the parking lot and I said, you know, how are you? I'm trying to be nice. And I said, you know, I need to explain a couple of things to you. She goes, well, what's that? She got kind of snotty with me. I said, well, first and foremost, I said, you're traveling on an associate rate. So, oh my God. So, you know, while an associate is treated just like every other guest, an associate still has expectations just like every other guest. You represent the brand and your property. Exactly. Checkout time is 12 noon. You checked out at 9 30, but you continue to occupy the room. It's now almost one o'clock. She goes, Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I, I overslept. Now, I'm standing at her car. Okay. She was in front of me when I drove in to work this morning. I saw the car and I, the, the thought that I had was raggedy ass Mercedes, right? It's just like all beat up. Huh. So I recognized the car. I didn't recognize her. I recognized the car. And I said, well, you know, I don't understand how it is that you slept until noon. When I saw you drive in this morning, you were in front of my car. Oh my gosh. She goes, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, uh. And I said, you know, and we need to discuss something else. I said, why are you covering the smoke detectors in the room? Oh. She goes, well, I, I didn't do it. Uh-huh. I said, okay, so, and I looked at her passenger and I said, did you do it? She goes, oh, no, no, I, I wasn't even in the room. Okay, so who did it? Who's the mystery person that covered a smoke detector eight feet off the ground? Oh, it, it had to have been one of the other people in the room. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, the room's only registered two. Oh, my gosh. Who are the other people? And she goes, um, uh, and I mean, the whole time they just, they reek of smoke. They oh, reek of, my God. They reek of weed. They reek of body odor. I mean, <sighs> What yeah. property does she work at? Shoot. That's the thing. She doesn't work at a property. She was listed as a family member. Oh. So I emailed the property that issued the form. I haven't heard anything back, but I don't know. We'll find out. Wild. Oh, I didn't do it. Did you get money out of the card? No. See, that was the thing is that, and this is why I know they checked out early online so that it would release authorization. Damn. And you tried to reauthorize and it wouldn't? Mm-hmm. It wouldn't go through. Ugh. Yeah, total. The total charge was fifty two dollars with tax because of the employee rate. That's insane. We couldn't even get an extra fifty bucks. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, Ugh. I told. I mean, I told her straight to her face. Look, you are blackballed from the hotel. You're never going to be accepted here again. And it turned out that she had stayed at that hotel twice before. The last time was about a year ago during the pandemic. Huh. And oh it was God. on. A, it was on an associate rate as well. So I'm on the hunt to try and find the form for that. I want to see if it's the same associate. The same associate, yeah. I almost hope it is, so you can get them in trouble. Oh, like, I did. I already sent an email to the manager that was noted on the form. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's out of Oof. Arizona. Oh my gosh, those were always the worst. Whenever it was an associate acting poorly, it's just, it's a, come on, guys, do better. Well, you represent the brand. You represent the hotel. Yeah. It's like you're you're an ambassador for your property. Be on your best behavior. And I it's, can't speak for all brands, but the most recent big box one that I previously worked at takes that very seriously. Mm-hmm. I was at a pro, I was at a property when I was working down in San Diego, and one of my associates who was had no leadership title or whatsoever, wasn't a supervisor, just a normal desk agent, went to another big box of that brand and was having a good time drinking too much being a little too friendly having a little too much fun basically got super drunk and didn't do anything egregious but apparently made a fool of himself and he had happened to have mentioned that he works at one too they found out where he worked and he got fired just for Mm. that yeah it's like nope you represent if you're gonna mention to even where you work you made us look bad you're done i've seen it happen yeah i've i've gotten people fired for that too yeah not proud to say but you know the one that ended up being terminated because of me, it turned out that their manager, when I reached out to him, basically he said that this was the second strike against that person. Oh my gosh. So yeah, they got, they got zapped. Yeah. They're lucky that got even one warning. Most of the time it's just like, nope, you're gone. Deuces. Done. 
Wait, we kind of got off topic from gypsies. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, breadcrumbs. Back on trial. So yeah, the guy yesterday, reservation came in for a California government employee rate. But the guy that okay. shows up at the front counter is gypsy. Oh. <laughs> at least, I, I mean, sorry, not to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Presumptuous. Okay. But in my opinion, gypsy. Pulls the, the card that, oh, no, no, speaky ingly. No, speaky ingly. Okay. And I said, okay, well, you know, what language do you speak? Oh, no, speak English. <laughs> he was standing there with a uh, Romanian ID card okay. in his hand. So I'm like, oh, Romanian? And he kind of, he like looked at it, looked at me, and he kind of put the card away. So I pulled up my phone. I pulled out my translator, and I selected, you know, Romanian. Love it. And I started typing out what I was going to ask him. And this other guy who had pulled the no Ingly card as well comes to me and he goes, you know, what, what's the problem? All of a sudden he speaks English. <laughs> and he said, you know, what's the problem? And I said, well, there's not one problem. There's two. I said, first and foremost, I said, you booked a re uh, reservation on a California state government room rate, but you aren't from California. You don't have a California ID. I said, yeah. you've, you've, you know, you've got a Romanian ID. <laughs> So you don't qualify for the government contractor room rate. Yeah. And he starts to throw an attitude and he starts to get belligerent with me. So I said, you know, hang on, let me come around the counter and we'll, we'll discuss it. I wanted to take him outside. And he got real belligerent, started to get very aggressive, like unnecessarily aggressive. Huh. Kind of like your guy at the, the restaurant. I didn't get spit on though. Um, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, he starts, he starts yelling at me and I'm sorry to be rude, but I love it when foreigners with very, very heavy accents start trying to swear in English. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it just makes me laugh when people call me son of beach. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I asked the guy to, you know, step outside and he tells me to F off and he turns around and walks oh. away. So as he's walking away, I said, well, would you like me to cancel your reservation, sir? <laughs> Gives me the bird and walks out. Oh my God. Yeah. So afterwards, one of the front desk girls tells me, oh, this guy comes in here three or four times every summer, every year. Huh. Oh, huh. really? Fits the pattern falling in, you know, in the, in the fall. Yeah. Finds an issue, always complains, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, well, congratulations. You just met a gypsy. Wow. Yeah. I literally don't think I've ever met one. You're a better person for it. <laughs> That's so wild. No, I just I just meet crazy other people. Oh, yeah. Right now, it's crazy people with money. They're they're a delight. Uh, what I've been fighting right now a lot is uh, no shows and people disputing no shows. So just in this last week, I've had one lady. So she no showed. Several days later, she asked for it to be refunded because she had COVID. We're like, well, you should have called and canceled and let us know. But since it no showed, the charge is already posted. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, no, but I have can't, I have COVID, so you guys can't charge me. And uh, I don't even know why my agent asked. She's like, well, can you send us positive COVID tests? Because I'm like, it doesn't matter. It no showed. You have to tell us in advance. So the lady then sends a test, and then in response to that email, she says, so are you guys going to remove the no show charge? And the test was a picture of a negative COVID test. <laughs> <laughs> And my agent forwards it to me and she's like so are we gonna refund her <laughs> no <laughs> so i told her to respond i mean like unfortunately um you would have had to have produced a positive covid test prior to your arrival <laughs> in order to get your reservation canceled and two your test is negative <laughs> so uh no need to quarantine no and by the way shout out if you are trying to get out of a reservation or not even a reservation like let's say in life you're trying to get out of something by saying you have covid don't just google positive covid test because guess what we do that too and if we find your picture on google or google we're gonna call you out oh the reverse photo search literally all and the same lady did it and she's like oh i'm sorry covid brain let me resend that and then she sent a positive one but both those photos negative and positive were on google so i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure she just got mixed up and typed a negative covid test i okay so on the note of google search and oh, like gosh. internet photos um years ago i had a, a houseman that called off sick and he had he had been chronically calling off and i'd had a conversation with him saying look if you call off again we are going to be starting formal documentation you're going to get written up we're yeah. going to go down that path. I can't keep giving you opportunities to correct your behavior when you clearly don't want to correct your behavior. Yeah. 
So he was scheduled to come in at, I think it was a mid shift, like 10 o'clock. He doesn't show. Mm -hmm. So I, I shoot him a message. Hey, where are you? Your, you know, your shift started 20 minutes ago. Silence. About a half hour goes by. I get a text from him. He says, you know, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, I was with my girlfriend on the freeway and we were involved in the car accident. I said, oh, okay. Well, you know, I hope you're okay. Everything, you know, everything okay. He says, yes. And I said, okay, well, I need you to be here tomorrow. We'll discuss it tomorrow. I left it at that. That's all I can do, right? Yeah. A few minutes goes by, my phone pings. I look at it and it's a, it's a photo of a car that the front end is crunched. And it's okay. like against the bumper of another car. But it's not a real close photo. And it's clearly not a cell phone photo. Like the clarity is just too good. The resolution is too good. <laughs> so I'm sitting there looking at the photo and something just doesn't feel right. And then I realized it's because the road that the car is on is not a freeway. And he was very specific that he said, Oh my God, we you're were a involved. detective. No, I was pissed. <laughs> I was petty. I wasn't a detective. I was just pissed and petty. So I'm looking at it and I realized that, you know, the, the, the road that this car is on is like a, it's a multi-lane highway, but it's not a freeway. And better than that, this is like in the spring, but there was a tree in the distance in the background oh of the gosh. photo that had fall colors. You're wild. So, so that prompted me to reverse image search that photo and when i did it came up as a stock photo on like every ambulance chasing attorney's website oh my gosh so now i'm like i can't believe this guy is such a slippery call shit. him out call him out yeah, i was i was <laughs> pissed and then i had like this calm moment that came over me of like okay you know what number one He's chronically late. We've got some documentation that needs to be done. But number two, I'm going to have some fun with this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day he comes in and I said, hey, you know, how are you, how you feeling? He goes, oh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. A little, little, little stiff, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> and I said, oh, you know, I'm really sorry to hear about your girlfriend's car and blah, 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 blah. I said, you know, what, what kind of car was it? Because like in the picture you sent, it, it looked like it took the damage pretty well. What kind of car was that? He goes, um, uh... You know, I, I don't know. It's my girlfriend's car. Oh, okay. Hey, what color was your girlfriend's car? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> uh, black? I'm like, <laughs> you don't know? I'm like, you're you're questioning? You don't know the color of your girlfriend's car? Um, well, I, th I think it was black. It was dark. I pull up my phone. I'm like, you mean like the silver one here? <laughs> uh, the look on his face was priceless. He kind of blanched out. And I said, you know, is there anything you'd like to explain? <laughs> He's silent. He just kind of stood there. He goes, no, no, I think we're good. Picks up his backpack and he walks out of my office. Never comes back. He never came back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know why. Oh, I, I wonder. Yeah, he knew the writing was on the wall. So I, I processed him out and just mailed him his check. But it was oh. just, just the look on his face was so priceless. I mean, and the reality was is that, yeah, he was going to get dinged for, you know, calling off yet again. I mean, at the minimum, he would have gotten dinged for being tardy. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he was an hour late for work or whatever. It would have been a write-up. It would have been the start of formal documentation. Yeah. Instead, he chose to lie about it, got caught. Mm-hmm. Well, now when you start lying about it, I'm going to fire you. Oh, and my God. He knew it, so he quit. Oh, I love when you have you have the receipts, you have the evidence, <sighs> and you kind of let them dig their own grave first, and then you present them with, well, this is what I have. <laughs> and then they go, oh, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. This property, um, we record all incoming calls. And, you know, there's that yeah, always that message, saying. and it says, oh. For quality purposes. So guests kind of forget that. And then they'll try to tell me, well, the person I spoke with when I made the reservation said X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, did they? What else did they say? And I kind of let them keep talking. And then I pull up the recorded call and I download it and show them like, well, this is the recorded call of you booking it. And then they double. Oh, I, I, I must have remembered something different. I did a different hotel. Oh, it must have been from the, the stay before. Yeah, yeah, of course. So this, again, this last weekend... Um, this lady, so this a husband and wife come to check in and they were a very, with a large group of people and they come to check in and we can't find the reservation anywhere. So, you know, we broaden our search and they were a no show from the night prior and she swears up and down. She's like, no, I made it for these dates. I made it very clear and, you know, swears up and down. 
And I was like, well, I, I'll pull the recorded call. But in the meantime, we are sold out. Uh, we only have well, sold out, meaning we had, and I told her, I'm like, we have exactly two rooms left to sell. They will sell tonight. So you have your pick between this room and this room. And I gave her the two options. She's option like, A. Well, <laughs> option A, <laughs> face the street. Option B, you face towards the inner courtyard. She's like, but we booked the water view. And I said, well, that was yesterday. So today, this is what we have. And they kept pressing it. And I said, look, these are the, you know, like your airline one. This is what I got. You pick chicken or pasta. There's <laughs> nothing else on the menu. And so they, they you know, pick pasta. Um, but they were very insistent. And they're like, well, are we going to get a credit? Because the, oh, and the rooms they reserved and no showed on, there were two rooms. And... They're like, so are we going to get a credit for those? I'm like, once I pull the call, if the if we made a mistake, we will absolutely make it right and you will get your credit. So because it was a very busy Saturday. I did not have time to go and pull that call yet. So towards the end of my shift, I go and pull that call. I listen to it. She very, very clearly stated Friday, Friday, at least three times and stated the dates, which my reservations agent confirmed multiple times and sent her confirmation email. And when I was talking to her, I was like, did you get confirmation? Email? Oh, we didn't check our email. Well, it was on there. So then I pull this call where she repeats the date multiple times. My reservation agent repeats the date multiple times. I download it and then email it to her and show her. And she comes down to the desk and was like, well, have I been credited back for my stays? I'm like, oh, I actually emailed you. Um, You very clearly stated two rooms on this date. Would you like to listen to it together? Oh, uh, well, I, I obviously meant, ah, uh, and then she then like doubled and was like, well, I should still get a credit because we didn't use those rooms. And then I had to explain again how hotels work. I said, look, we were sold out last night. We held two rooms for you because you requested it and you prepaid for it. We did not give your rooms away. Why would we then refund you for that? I lose revenue because you made a mistake and we confirmed the dates multiple times. We sent you a confirmation email. You even get a text before from our resort saying, oh, we're looking forward to your stay on this date. And is there anything you need to make your stay more comfortable? We did it at least three different times. Why would we then give you money back? Except I said it nicer than that. And oh, she's you like, should have said it just like that. <laughs> I, I said it with a little more fluff, but still at the same time, like, I, I'm confused. Why, why would we do that? <laughs> she's like, but we didn't stay in those rooms you know what this is what we're doing for you this is the room you got and you're going to pay for that and you're going to pay for the rooms you didn't use too that's when you just crack your knuckles and you say bitch i'm gonna take you to school <laughs> you're not getting shit from me lady give, give her a beat down right there in the <laughs> i've done this long enough there you can't wear me down get out get your 20 kids and get out <laughs> This, this family or gr group, you never know. They literally took over the restaurant and their kids were running around everywhere. And the like the head guy, like the ma matriarch, patri patriarch, the mm -hmm. patriarch in charge, literally like the restaurant manager. Again, it's this always the same restaurant manager that's working that always just gets beat. But he goes over and he's <laughs> like, sir, can you, would you mind containing your kids? I'll get this into them playground. So they're going to trip. They're going to get hurt. And, he's, and he yelled at him. He says, my kids can do whatever we want. We're paying a lot of money to be here. Because mm. you know, money can buy class, which it can. no, yeah, I've learned that. Yeah, doesn't matter how rich you are, money does not buy class. No, not at all. <laughs> so glad they're gone. <laughs> uh, you know, okay, so I'm gonna loop back okay. to what we were talking about before with um, my houseman coming out of the pandemic when okay. we were trying to reopen the hotel one of the times and one of the front desk agents was over an hour late punching in. Okay. He fills out a manual punch edit form and he leaves it for me. This was on a day that I wasn't there. So I asked him, I said, you know, well, why did you punch in an hour late mm -hmm. and then give me a punch edit form? He goes, oh, well, you know, I, I punched in when I realized that I hadn't punched in yet for my shift. I said, so you were here for an hour, realized you didn't punch in, punched in, and then filled out a form for the hour prior. I am so confused. Okay. Yeah, I was too. And he says, yeah. I said, okay, so, you know, you, you were scheduled at 10. Okay. You punched in at 11. Okay. Forgot that you didn't punch in at 10 when you got there, filled out the form so you get that hour. He says, again, 
Yes. Do they forget we have security cameras? We can track all this. Well, you see, that was my that was why I wanted to be very, very clear of what happened. Uh huh. So he says, yes, third time. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Great. So I did some research. <laughs> And I pulled the security footage. Get the receipts. (laughs) And what do I see? I see him drive in because I can see through the front doors and I see him come in Uh and then I see him walk in at 11. So I back the cameras up and I'm, I'm, you know, watching from like 930 on. He is nowhere to be found. (laughs) Okay. So again, we're in a situation where honesty would have been the best policy. Yeah. Because if he had been late... And simply late. You'd just get a tardy. He would get, you know, a conversation. You can't be doing this, so on and so forth. You know, and I'm the kind of person that I will give you a couple of chances. As long as 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 long as what you did is not egregious. Right. We all make mistakes. So let me help you learn from the mistakes. We'll correct it. We all move on together, right? So I tell him, I said, you know, here's the challenge with what you're telling me. I said, you told me that you came in at 10, but I don't find you anywhere on the security cameras. I do see you drive in at 11. I see you walk into the lobby at 11. I see you punch in at 11. But your form that you filled out shows 10 o'clock. Time clock fraud. Time clock fraud. Fired out. And I said to him, I said, is that your signature at the bottom? He said, yeah. I said, then why are you lying to me? Why are you defending this lie? Mic drop. And he just looks at me. He goes, okay, well, you know, I I just, I didn't want to be late and get written up. Oh, okay. And I said, okay, right. I can fully understand that. I said, but do you understand that we went from you being late and a potential conversation, maybe a a, a written documentation to now you being late and I'm going to order your final check and you can pick it up tomorrow. Yeah. He goes, what? What what does that mean? You're fired. I said, that means that you no longer work here. (laughs) Because not only did you lie to my face, but you filled out the punch edit form to get paid for an hour that you weren't even here. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's theft of hours. Yeah. That's a terminable offense. And that's where we're at. So you went from something that would have been so simple to now you're looking for a new job. Do you know what's wild? I've termed at least two associates for that. And it blows my mind that people don't think that's a bad thing. No. And one associate uh, who currently works with me, she filled out her time card incorrectly. And I was not sure if she'd meant it or not yet. So I said, I just want to let you know, other associates said you left at this time, but your time, your punch, your manual punch says this time. Number one, why are you doing manual punches? Why aren't you using the time clock? Two, why is this a different time? Oh, it just escaped my mind. And I was like, I just want to let you know, by you putting down this time and signing it, if I find out that you left at a different time, that's called time card theft or Every company calls it something, something a different. different. And I'm like, like and theft that's, of hours is that's usually a, what it's called. Yeah. And I'm like, and that's a terminable offense. You're lying about your hours work. She, and then she immediately was like, oh, well, I'm not sure I'd have to like double it. I'm like, people just think, oh, I can just put down whatever I want. I'm going to get paid for that. No, you're stealing from the company. Bye. Adios. <laughs> I mean, I know that when we worked together, you you had to let somebody go. I know. I was just saying, yeah, that was, yeah, that sucked. It's not a fun. We don't enjoy firing people. That, that sucks on mm, so many levels. Let's pause that because there there have been times in my career where I've had to let people go that it was like. Okay. Okay. Maybe that. What, but, now, okay. But you know what, though? Whether that person needs to go or like in the case of the guy I was just talking about, which I didn't really, I didn't have a problem with the guy. Um, yeah. He was rough. He needed training, so on and so forth. But there was hope for him. So it's not like I wanted to see him go. But whether or not you want to see that person go or not, it pisses me off that people will put you in that position of being such the bad guy. Yeah. You know, and it's it, what oh God. What really cracks me up is that I, I've gotten to the point with, in my career where I tell people it's all about recognition. Okay. So tangent and tell a quick story. Years ago, I had this director of HR who I was having a conversation with and I was, I was very upfront with him that I really struggled at the time with writing people up. And his advice back to me was, don't think about it as writing them up. Think about it as recognizing their efforts. And okay. I, I kind of was like, what? And he goes, well, think about it this way. He said, if they do something right and a guest leaves them a tip, why did they get the tip? And I said, well, probably because they went above and beyond and the guest recognized that. He said, perfect. So the guest recognized their efforts and thereby gave them something in recognition of that employee's efforts. I said, okay. He said, now think about it the opposite way. If somebody is coming in late, 
if they call off all the time, you know, if they have performance issues and whatnot, you're not writing them up. You are simply recognizing their efforts. <laughs> Ding, light bulb moment. And it made a lot of sense because, you know, if you work your tail off and a guest gives you 20 bucks and I roll up next to you and I said, hey, uh, Miss B, that, uh, that tip you got, you're going to split it with me, right? What's your answer going to be? Fork off. Exactly. Why? Because you busted your, your tail and you made that extra 20 bucks. True that. However, if something goes wrong and I have to have a conversation with you, what do you do? You walk around talking about, oh man, my boss, he just wrote me up. He's such a jerk, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You're sharing the recognition of your efforts with everybody else. <laughs> You know, so it's like when that moment kind of gelled in my head, it's like, okay, well, now I really don't have a problem with writing people up because I'm not writing you up. You are writing yourself up. I'm oh, just, yeah. I am just simply recognizing your efforts. Yeah. Or in this particular case, lack of efforts. <laughs> You know, and, and he went on to explain that it's the same thing with letting someone go. You don't fire them. They fire themselves because yeah. of their actions. But yet they, it's, it's wild. Every time I fire someone, which, you know, it's, it's not that often, but I always think this time, like, it's going to be an easy one. They're going to know what they did wrong. Like, it's pretty black and white. They did it to themselves. They know it's coming. And in every single firing, almost every single person's blown away that it's happening doesn't see it coming and then proceeds to argue about why it's not right and just mm. tries to argue and argue and it's just like whoa you you literally did x y z like i i don't understand how you thought there would be a different outcome and one girl literally said but i get so many positive reviews i get the most positive reviews and the most name mentions out of this entire property mm -hmm. and she's like i would assume that there would be some grace and this and i'm like no it's it's a black and white policy yeah I mean, your five previous write-ups tell me differently. Um, one of the things that I've started doing when I've been forced to let someone go is I have them walk me through what the problem is. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, and having people walk themselves through their own termination has made it a little bit easier and a little bit less dramatic hmm. because they come to the realization on their own rather than having to be told, I'm letting you go. Okay. You know, so it's like, hey, look, you know, for example, um, someone that's a chronic, uh, chronic sick call person. Okay. okay. When they've reached that maximum number of times that they can call off sick and we've had the conversations leading up to that final one that is, Hey, look, if this happens again in X period of time, I will have to let you go. Yeah. Okay. So that gets documented. It's written right there on the disciplinary action form. So when that happens again and I have to sit down with that person, I typically will give them their own file. Say, here, look, this is what we need to talk about. You know, on such and such date, you had an issue with sick calls. We had a conversation about it. This is a documented verbal conversation. You know, two weeks later, you did the same thing again. Here's your first written warning. Three weeks later, called off again. Here's your second written warning. Mm. Two weeks later, called off again. Here's your third written warning. And you'll note down there, there is a, a notation on the last one that you signed that says what? And they'll read it. It's like, can you read it to me? Oh, my God. They'll say, you know, continued, you know, absenteeism, you know, may result up to and including termination. Okay, great. And where are we today? <laughs> Talking about why I was, I called off. Great. Where are we at now? I'm losing my job, aren't I? Yes, you are. Here's, wow. Here's your final check. That's wild. And there's usually no arguing at that point. It's just resignation and involuntary <laughs> resignation. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. The last, well, the last one, the last two I've had were really dramatic, but they weren't ones that the people saw coming. And in my mind, I, I was like, how could you not see it coming? But it wasn't ones that there had been prior documentation. Mm -hmm. So it was those kinds of firings where it's like, you done effed up, man. Like, you know, there's certain stuff that's very black and white. You don't get a bunch of chances. Theft, sexual harassment, egregiously like racist things, um, what is it, assault. Fights fights like there's some stuff that's like super black and white if you do it you're done mm -hmm. and then we're sitting there in hr's office and they're telling you why you lost your job and you're arguing why you shouldn't have and i'm just like but but you said x y and z to another person well i was kidding what uh, what makes you think that you can say that while you're at work well we were just joking around uh and sometimes when they say crazy stuff or and then you have to repeat it back to them <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not comfortable saying this. Can who wants to read this? <laughs> Can you read what you said? <laughs> 
God, I've had some crazy employee stories too. Yeah, me too. The, we can I mean, write most, books. I mean, most of what we've talked about has been guests with bad behavior. So it's kind of <laughs> nice to dive down a, a, a associates, a different path. man. Yeah, associates. Yeah, got plenty of those. Uh, the most recent one. Well, she, I didn't have to fire her. I basically. Did you get to choose to fire her? So I did. I tell you about this. <laughs> You're gonna have to so. stop me if I told you about this. But I, I gave her the bill, option A and option B. And so this this girl, she. And let me guess, option A was the best choice. <laughs> oh, it's, it's... Option A is always the best choice. There is no better option behind <laughs> curtain number two. But they always choose B. Oh goodness. Okay, tell me. Tell me. Literally, tell me, tell me. she could. She was never. She never came to work on time. She called off frequently. And I don't know what it is recently. I don't know if it's this generation. If I'm going to be one of these old people saying that or what. But right now, I'm having so many associates that just tell me, yeah, I'm not going to be able to come in until X time. So I'll be there around like five. And I go, that's not your scheduled time. You don't just get to tell me when you're coming in. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. So this girl was one of those. Say, yeah, I'm I'm not going to be there this time. Or, oh, yeah, I can't work Saturday. I have this issue. And I'm like, well, you're sounds like your problem because you need to get your shift covered you don't just tell me yeah no so they kept happening kept happening and i was just getting so frustrated so i was gonna have a hard conversation with this girl like literally i was planning on it and i come into work i'm already ready to have this hard conversation and uh so she hadn't she wasn't there yet and the other associate who was there came into my office and shut the door and i said look i am sick and tired all she does is play on her phone. She doesn't do the checklist. And he's like, at one point I looked over and she was even buzzed out of the phones. She wasn't taking calls. I was the only one taking calls. She was on the clock playing on her phone, playing a game. And he's like, why am I having to do all this? And I was, I was done. I was already planning on having this hard conversation with her over attendance. And then I heard this and I'm like, it's over. It's done. So she comes into work and I said, come take a seat don't even go to your desk. And I shut the door and I said, look, here's what we have going on. And I went over how her attendance is abysmal, how she has a terrible attitude. And I I asked, I said, do we even want to work here? And her response floored me. No. No. (laughs) I said, then why are you here? And she's like, you know, I have a kid. I need this additional money. This is her second job. And she's like, I I work full time. This is my second job. And I just, I'm too tired. I don't want to be here. I want to be home. And I said, okay, I can understand that. I've got a kid. I work full time. I couldn't imagine doing another job. And I get that. I said, but you are here. You have this job. And when you're here, you need to be present. You need to do that job. You need to show up because the rest of us here, this is our job. And Mm -hmm. you're making our lives harder and our jobs harder by not showing up, by not being present, by not staying on the phones like you're supposed to. And I said, it's not fair to the rest of us. Like, can you see that, that you're putting us through this? And she's like, yeah, I, I can see that. And I said, so I'm going to give you two options. And I, I want you to take your shift to think about it. Or if you want to give me the answer now, you can. Option A, I want a coming to Jesus, complete turnaround. You need to show up for your shifts. You need to be present. I don't want to see you on your phone. I don't want to hear a complaint about you from another associate. You do that. That's option A. Or option B Oh no, there was three. There was three options. Option B, you can quit right now. You can sign this paper right here. I had it ready to go. And I said, this is your, you can go. Or there's option C is that I'm going to start writing you up and you're in your 90 days. You're not going to make it past your 90 days. So turn around, quit, or I'll write you up and you'll get fired. And I said, do you need some time to think about it? She's like, I, she's like, yeah, I, I, she's like, I just, I've got a lot going on right now. I, I just need a minute. And, I, and she got like flustered. And I said, why don't you go take a walk? I'll be right here. I've got some stuff to deal with. And after you take a walk, you come back and we'll talk. So she goes and takes a walk. While she's taking a walk, I get a call that there's a dead body in a room, you know, because timing. They're like, yeah, room two, whatever, the person's dead. I said, oh, cool. Okay. So, you know, we, we call the ambulance. Because, you know, that. I, don't, I don't have enough going on right no, now. No, never, never. Literally, I never do. And so there's a dead body. Cool. So I'm now panicked and frazzled. And she comes back in. And she's like, you know... I'm not really sure like what I want to do, but I can't come into my shift tomorrow because I have X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, great option two. (laughs) And I look at her. I'm like, oh, I almost said the name. I'm like, you know, uh, Sue, are you serious right now? I was like, I just got a radio that I have a dead body in a room. You're telling me that you're not going to work for your shift tomorrow. And then right now you're not even working right now. I don't have anyone on phones right now. And I said, it sounds like you made up your decision. She's like, yeah, I'll sign the paper. (laughs) 
good done. She signed the paper. I had no one on phones. I had to forward them and then, you know, overwhelm my other agent while I figured out the dead body situation. Ugh. <laughs> my life in a nutshell. Bodies in hotel rooms. Oh, just, just remember, nobody ever dies in your hotel. <laughs> You're not a doctor. You can't pronounce. It's true. That's why people die at the hospital, not yep. in your hotel. It's true. And don't ever tell your room attendants that somebody no, died. No, they room. found we didn't. And all the housekeeping managers know, but somebody, they found out somehow. Mm -hmm. And the room attendants would not go clean that room. They were freaking out. And all the housekeeping managers were like, how did they find out? How did they know? But we think it was an amateur security agent that maybe mm -hmm. let some things slip. Because we we obviously keep it pretty tight-lipped, but I think a newbie got a little too excited about the drama. God, it's been, what, 2016, I think, was the last one I dealt with? You're kidding. Uh-uh. It was like a month ago for me. Yeah, no, I've only had I've only had two in the last ten years. Wild. I think in my entire career there's only been five. Huh. But I still remember the room numbers of the last ones. Right. <laughs> yeah, you never forget that. No, you don't. Um, you know, and then a total like little tangent on that, but related to that, one of the things that I've been seeing on TikTok is these idiots that dress up their bed to look like a dead body and oh wrap my the God. cord around the neck. Don't Poor housekeepers. Whenever I see that, they're wanna, so mean. I want to slap every single one of those TikTokers that does that. It's oh just rude. God. I mean, you're you're literally you're gonna scar someone for a joke that you're not even present for. And they're already terrified of these things to begin with. Yeah, just all of them. Just go. Go burn in hell, please. Yes, special place in hell. <laughs> Seriously, your own little special circle. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Poor housekeepers. housekeepers. Again, tip your housekeepers, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Can't say that enough. As as Miss B always says, be nice, tip your housekeeper. Yes, please. <laughs> I agree with both. Oh, man. <sighs> so I think on that note, we can wrap it up here for the evening. <laughs> um, but I want to give a shout out to some new listeners. And looking at the analytics for the podcast, we picked up some listeners in Illinois, a couple in Texas, one in Houston, one in uh, outside of Dallas. We've got listeners in Florida and it was Wichita, Kansas. So for all of you that are listening from those areas, if it's one of you, thank you. We appreciate the, the listens. At this point, we're going to cap it for the evening and we will see you again in two weeks. Miss B, thank you as always for being here. Love talking with you. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you guys again soon. Bye.